Welcome to Visit Arctic Europe uh, Sustainable Webinar. Uh, this is uh, one of uh, those uh, monthly webinars we will run uh, uh, in this winter. In uh, November, we had digitalization webinar. Now, today, the sustainability. Let's return on that. In uh, February uh, 16th, we go back to the digitalization and Ashwin uh, Rajan will tell about uh, experiment in digitalization and how to play with big players. Can you hear me? There come the comment that sound doesn't work very well. Is this okay? And in March uh, 24th, our main market uh, representatives from uh, German-speaking uh, Europe, uh, Benelux and uh, UK uh, will tell how uh, the market seems at the moment and when we can wait the uh, uh, post-COVID situation. Guess van den Bosch from Benelux and Jan Padur from German-speaking Europe and Clive Stacey from UK will open open these issues for us. In April and May, we will go on to have also webinars, but the topics of those and themes are not decided yet. If you have any uh, proposals, the team, via team is very, uh, well, will welcome all ideas. Today, I'm uh, delighted to uh, uh, cooperation with the Mimir organization from Norway, who has worked with us from very beginning of the project. And uh, today we will concentrate to uh, topics which can be done in uh, sustainability, even though the COVID is uh, on and uh, the whole industry is struggling, struggling in, in situation. Before I allow the uh, board to take the stage, I would like to introduce you some outcomes of uh, UNVTO uh, research, how final consumers think about the uh, uh, post-COVID situation and how they uh, uh, see the sustainability in the situation. Please, uh, Richard, could you change the slide? So what has changed? in uh, final consumers' uh, mind uh, when they start to travel again. And next slide, please, Riku. So it seems that people uh, seek the more close uh, uh, markets and destinations where to go, and these kind of staycations uh, are, are there also. And uh, and uh, also the, the uh, stay time in destination will be longer than earlier. Health and, measure, health and safety measures and cancellation policies are very important con uh, concerns when the final consumers will make the uh, uh, decision where to go and which uh, delivery chain and which supply, which uh, service providers they will use. And uh, then uh, our kind of uh, destination where the social distances are easy to keep and nature is here around are seen more attractive uh, uh, holiday destination. Also last minute bookings because uh, in this uh, very quickly changed uh, situations are seen now more uh, attractive. And uh, let's go to the final slide. Here, I want to uh, raise this very important issue also for today. The people will choose now and in future the uh, destination and uh, service providers who can see who can uh, prove the responsible and sustainability way uh, 
in actions and the people want to uh, uh, support the local communities in an authenticity in, in, in their holidays. With these words, I want to give you give a, a stage now to the board, Ervan from Mimir organization and uh, open the webinar. Thank you for all and enjoy. Thank you, Roma. Your introduction fits very well with uh, what I was going to say. Uh, but I just want to inform you right away that uh, we need to do a little uh, twist in the program. Uh, but first, I will just say it's good to see you all. We know the times are tough, but think about it. Tough times don't last, tough people do. And we feel that in the tourism business now, all over, it's a lot of tough people. They are struggling. It's a hard, it's hard times. But anyway, you see, we see an, uh, a light uh, in the end of the tunnel now. And I am, um, I believe also we need to to use this time now, this time up, uh, this uh, time out that we have gotten in in in. Um, our businesses in the, in the tourism industry, we need to use that for planning the, the future. And sustainability, like Irana says, is definitive, uh, definitely a part of, of the future. Uh, we, uh, the presenters today will be me and Ingrid from, from Mimir, and we will uh, talk later because uh, now we have to start with Milena, uh, who is going to give you her perspectives on how we can work with sustainability also from a behavioral, uh, economic um, uh, aspect. And because there was a little confusion about the time, uh, the, the, there's one hour <laughs> difference between Eastern European uh, time and Central European time. So I gave her, I'm sorry for that, I gave her incorrect information about when we will start. That means that she has to leave for another meeting and we need to switch to Milena's presentation uh, right away. And then I'll come back to my uh, introduction uh, afterwards. But I just want to set the stage like Rana said it's time for thinking about how we can build back better now uh, these uh, trends uh, that he uh, showed from UNBTO is also something that Euromonitor just came out with as consumer trends uh, the the um, the focus on on a sustainable future so but now I will leave the stage to Milena and then we'll pick up uh, the thread uh, again in my presentation afterwards. So uh, please, uh, Richard, change to, to Milena. Mm. Thank you, Bort. Thank you, Richard. Um, and uh, welcome from me. It's really a pleasure to be back and to uh, add value to uh, the work that has been happening um, under the program. Um, what I will do is uh, refresh your memory on some of the discussions that we had the chance to uh, engage in last year, last, uh, last spring, um, and connect um, some of these trends in uh, consumer behavior and traveler behavior to what we, um, what we can do um, as behavior smart design and behavior smart thinking in order to be in harmony with the behavior trends, but also to achieve our own goals uh, towards sustainability. So um, I will use some examples and uh, you will see some familiar slides and I hope that uh, they will uh, help bring back some of the uh, discussions that we've had uh, uh, in the past. Uh, and of course, uh, the second half of uh, what I'll be talking about um, will seek to remind you 
uh, what uh, uh, tools and tactics you actually have uh, readily available uh, in the Smart Ways Manual, which we recommended last time as, as a resource that can um, offer suggestions and guidance that uh, can move you closer to the sustainability priorities that were identified earlier uh, in the project. So, just a reminder of what is behavioral economics and what um, and uh, actually behavior smart thinking, which is kind of the more common way in which we describe it. So behavior smart thinking um, is inspired by uh, the knowledge field called behavioral economics. And what does behavioral economics do? It looks at different decisions and choices that we make on everyday basis, whether it's about uh, recycling, whether it's about education, career development, or it relates to financial investment or um, uh, health and well-being. And it looks at how we make these decisions and why is it that at a time when we have so much information about what is the optimal option in terms of maintaining a healthy lifestyle, in terms of uh, maintaining financial health and so on, we still see um, that uh, people make mistakes which are not only suboptimal, but actually in many cases are actually damaging to them. Um, one of the most common examples that behavioral economists like to give um, is from, um, from uh, traffic and uh, driving and using one's phones. So in countries and uh, places where this is not strict, strictly regulated, um, we see that uh, people using their phone while they're driving uh, is a common sight. Yet, all of us recognize on a very rational level that this holds tremendous risks. And actually, statistics show that uh, uh, the rate of accidents um, triggered by the fact that uh, uh, people are, um, uh, people's attention is diverted by uh, digital devices is constantly growing. So this is a brilliant example of how the idea that when we have enough information, we actually always find a way to make the optimal choice um, uh, shows that it doesn't work that way. So behavioral economists are interested in why do we make these mistakes um, and what are the factors that explain that. But even more so, uh, they look at how these mistakes can actually help us redesign situations uh, when we expect consumers or travelers or citizens to make a decision um, and create uh, a design uh, that it will increase the likelihood that they will make the choice that's good for them, good for society, good for the environment. So a very relevant uh, way of thinking uh, when it comes to sustainability. So um, just uh, in synthesis, being taking behavioral smart approaches means using insights from sciences that are interested with uh, human behavior um, and explaining the decision journey that leads people to a certain choice. What are the steps? What are the incentives and barriers that guide them to arrive at a certain choice? Um, and also, what are the factors that explain these deviations from rationality or from what would be um, uh, the optimal choice <clears throat> in a very objective uh, way. Now, if you remember when we were uh, going through a more detailed discussion of why do we um, have these phenomena, why do people make these um, suboptimal decisions, we talked about the fact that our brain has two different systems that take care of decisions. And we do have a rational system, of course, and this is our uh, part of the brain which likes analysis, it likes information, it goes through a slower and more resource-intensive process of looking at the different uh, options and really trying on a pros and cons uh, basis to really identify the, the optimal one. The reality is, though, that in many cases, this part of our brain actually doesn't kick in, so to say. 
either because it is biologically wired to save resources and avoid engaging in uh, these intensive processes um, when it can, or because on many occasions with our multitasking uh, culture, it's already busy with another decision or another problem. So therefore, we have um, many, many situations, and increasingly so, that the system too, um, which is this analytical and comparative and rational system, outsource choice making to our system one. And system one is um, a very impatient, childlike uh, system, which looks to make a decision quickly based on some shortcuts, based on tactics that help it avoid uh, a proper uh, pros and cons analysis, which is why on many occasions we actually end up in, deci in decision situations where the decisions are suboptimal. Um, and why do we care about that? Why do we talk about uh, system one and system two in, uh, uh, in our context? I will remind you that during our previous discussion, we actually looked at how the decision-making journey and pattern for travelers, our clients, has changed. And we recognize that whilst in the past, the majority of the decision decisions that our travelers were making was happening in that pre-trip um, anticipation stage when they were either looking at brochures, comparing different offers, um, and kind of going through lengthy discussions in order to arrive at the ideal design of their holiday. Today, we have a traveler looking like the young gentleman at the, uh, at the photo, who is on the go, equipped with um, a digital device, and who uh, has given themselves the flexibility of making um, decisions on the go while already at the destination when they're immersed in the smells and sights and emotions and dynamic of the destination. And therefore, many of these decisions are naturally channeled by this impatient system one because their attention and their senses are already busy, distracted with consuming the place they're in and the culture they're surrounded by. And so the decisions they're making are very often part of a multitasking context contest context which is the ideal recipe for uh, for system one so assuming that um, we increasingly have uh, such decision making context it really becomes interesting um, and important to think about how can we use what we know about this type of decision making the shortcut driven biased uh, decision making what can we do? Um, using that knowledge in order to make sustainability uh, automated and easy for the traveler so that we can't, because we can't expect them to go through um, a rational uh, choice making process that will help them get to the option that is the right option uh, for the planet and for our destination. So, what are some examples? I'll re I want to remind you of uh, some examples um, of solutions in our industry, which take uh, this behavior smart thinking and account for system one, uh, our impatient system one uh, models uh, in order to solve sustainability problems. And um, I will refresh your memory uh, with uh, one of the cases that I shared with you last spring, and that's the experience of uh, Virgin Atlantic. And Virgin Atlantic's uh, um, experience, uh, the project, which I'll, I'll remind you of, is actually one of the most powerful, I think, indicators of what the, the uh, behavioral economics can do for our industry. The story was that um, Virgin Atlantic being uh, um, one of the responsible and uh, 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 responsible airlines uh, with ambitions to be a front runner in terms of uh, quality and sustainability um, has been using all sorts of uh, tactics to encourage uh, pilots, its own pilots, to use fuel efficiency techniques during uh, flights. Uh, 
and uh, um, it's well established that there is uh, certain techniques which help save fuel during flights uh, without jeopardizing, of course, any of the safety or um, uh, or other important elements of uh, uh, that pilots uh, consider. Um, the problem was that even though this was part of their training, this was in all manuals and so on and so forth, pilots were actually um, very uh, uninterested, let's say, uh, in applying these techniques until... Uh, Virgin joined forces with a team of behavioral scientists from London School of Economics and Harvard to um, experiment with some soft behavioral techniques that would nudge pilots to actually apply these techniques, which they already know very well and which don't um, take much effort. So there's three um, uh, techniques that were applied um, uh, among the community of pilots. Uh, one was um, simply uh, monitoring and uh, the, the, the fuel efficiency behavior of pilots and sending them by email a monthly summary of how well they have done um, during the past month. Just the mere fact that this behavior was observed and that fuel efficiency was something that was monitored by the company had dramatic impact on the behavior of pilots. Suddenly, there was a very clear sign that this is a priority of, of the company and this was something that was being measured. So actually, this alone um, produced the highest effectiveness in terms of uh, change of behavior. The second technique, which actually added to the effectiveness of the first, was um, a little bit of a gamification, which we know um, works well, um, especially with a predominantly male uh, audience. Um, and that was uh, a challenge to each pilot to set their own um, efficiency targets for the following month. So they could choose to, to, to challenge themselves that they will be 10% better in their fuel efficiency behavior compared to the previous month. And this was also extremely powerful because then it turned this behavior into a fun, um, competitive action, uh, which um, added the uh, well, added importance and added challenge to to uh, the whole dynamic. And then the third element was actually rewarding pilots for. Uh, meeting their targets, the targets that they have set. And you might be surprised to know that actually the reward didn't, didn't matter at all. It did not add any further increase of the change of behavior. It was the first two uh, nudges that actually uh, uh, produced the really impressive results. And you can see some of the effects uh, that are listed there. Um, and it's really impressive. The reason that I, I talk about this case as, as, as really an impressive um, uh, story uh, for our industry is that you can see that with some um, minor investments, uh, certainly insignificant in comparison to um, uh, changing infrastructure, changing, uh, uh, transitioning to biofuels and so on and so forth. We have, we see the materialization of pretty significant financial savings, but also uh, savings in terms of carbon footprint. So a trivial investment in one airline has managed to produce this. And to me, it's really powerful to imagine that uh, the, the scale of the effect that we can see for the global airline industry, respectively for the travel industry, if all airlines adopt these uh, simple measures. Because indicating to employees that this is something that is measured, it's becoming one of the KPIs, is a strong enough signal to nudge people, to nudge um, staff members to align their behavior with the desired norms. And then especially if we manage to, to add a little bit of fun, a little bit of, uh, of an extra motivation, such as um, the gamification element, then that enhances uh, things even further. So, 
uh, really an interesting example in terms of showing the power of, uh, of behavior smart thinking. So I wanted to refresh uh, your memory on that. Another story that I shared with you last year and I want to come back to um, is the story um, um, of Carbon8. Um, Carbon8 is a solution developed by uh, the uh, Swedish company Carbon Cloud. Um, and Carbon Cloud was founded by a group of um, uh, researchers in climate, uh, in the climate um, impact of agriculture and food production. Um, and based on the very complex analytical work that uh, the researchers have done, they decided to invest their knowledge in producing a consumer facing solution for restaurants that allows restaurants based on the most um, current science of uh, uh, estimating um, the carbon footprint of food to actually estimate the carbon footprint of every item on their food menu. So ultimately that systems allows uh, allow them to um, use an indication of the carbon footprint of every item that's very similar to what you see on the slide. And here we have the reason that this is a, a behavior smart technique is that it actually allows us to simplify something that's extremely complicated which is the science of estimated carbon footprint of, uh, of uh, food production, but also to um, translate it into a system that's very easy to understand for a consumer and that automatically becomes a factor in the decision-making at the right point when I am at the sitting at the restaurant and I'm choosing what I'm going to have. So as a result of uh, the availability of this information, um, uh, we, uh, we know that consumers' uh, uh, choices uh, towards sustainability, sustainable options or carbon light uh, options uh, can change between 10 and 25%, which is quite significant. Um, and then um, another uh, uh, example I gave you last year, and I'm not going to go into the details just to remind you, um, is Venture Junkie, which again uses this behavior smart approach of actually create gamifying sustainable uh, behavior. So instead of seeking to educate the traveler about what's the right thing to do and what's the, uh, the more responsible choice making that they have to go through, actually the platform does it for themselves, um, uh, does it automatically and weave sustainability in the experience. And then it rewards um, the traveler for going through itineraries or for buying itineraries and experiencing itineraries which um, are um, with light uh, footprint because they either rely only on so local sourcing or um, they are plastics free or their carbon footprint line and so on. But the education about why this is um, uh, the, a good thing to do comes after the traveler has already engaged in the experience and has been uh, rewarded uh, for the uh, for the, their good doing uh, during their holiday. In any way, I uh, these are just some illustrations to uh, to to show the the practical and application side of uh, behavioral uh, thinking. Um, just a summary of the key takeaways that we uh, we have discussed in our behavioral uh, behavior smart uh, content. Um, the fact that many systems in our society and of course in our system are designed around uh, unrealistic behavioral assumptions, such as um, the fact that when we give uh, travelers enough information and we tell them what's the right thing to do, they will go ahead and and, and do that. Um, we also learned that the elements the format of the information and the context in which everything is presented can have a very powerful uh, impact on how travelers perceive a situation and what e uh, decisions they will make. Um, behavior smart adjustments, just like we just re uh, reminded ourselves with the Virgin Atlantic example, can produce really powerful impact, effect, and they can sometimes involve trivial investments because it's just a matter of adjusting the factors that translate 
uh, to the uh, desired choice. Um, and in the context of where we are now, we have an opportunity to benefit from some of these behavioral techniques in order to achieve more with less, which especially um, in the crisis context in which we are, um, is really a win-win um, uh, solution or recipe. And effective behavioral tactics require experimentation and testing and come with the responsibility for ethical application. So. If you remember last year, we were talking about the fact that we can select um, the tactics that are available to us, uh, but we always need to test and to make sure that they work for our context and to um, our specific business. Um, and then uh, in close, I just want to uh, remind you that in the context of um, the priorities that uh, uh, were selected as part of the earlier stages of, uh, um, of the program, um, uh, you, uh, we are focusing on uh, local buying, reducing impact, uh, and then uh, new uh, product and season development. Uh, and for these, in order to address these, you actually have um, easy access to some solutions which are available and already developed um, uh, and ready to use in the Smart Ways manual, which I'll come, uh, come to uh, in a second. Um, Basically, if you follow the smart ways uh, tactics, which align with each of the uh, uh, priorities, um, you will see that there's very clear steps that you need to follow. So, for example, to increase buying locally and uh, to strengthen local identity, um, we need to benchmark the current situation. Um, and then identify the target local products, uh, services, experiences, and then extract the interesting uh, facts and, and benefits that they really offer in comparison to the alternatives. Once we do that, we can build very interesting stories around these in order to highlight the advantages of buying um, these products versus the alternatives, which are not local. And then we can uh, create the right content and position it in the right moments, just like uh, the carbon cloud uh, idea, um, in order to make sure that the information influences uh, our consumers at the moment when they're likely to make choice. And again, uh, we need to test and make sure that it works. In terms of reducing impact on nature, uh, you will see that there's several tactics uh, that you can apply uh, across the, uh, the local supply chain. Um, we need to start by identifying with uh, the areas where we can improve the, the uh, impact and the footprint, benchmark the current situation, uh, plan the optimization tactics, and there's very specific steps that are described in the Smart Ways Manual, execute them, um, and then adjust and improve uh, if needed. Similarly, with the new strategic, um, uh, with the strategic new season development and uh, innovation, again, uh, you have a set of uh, solutions available in the manual. Uh, we need to identify the starting points, uh, scan current offerings, and, and identify the specific areas where we will be making the need, needed changes, execute the changes, and then um, uh, test and improve. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, the Smart Ways menu, which um, I hope everybody has access to. If not, you can always request the link and we can uh, share that. Um, offers a number of tactics um, that you can apply, uh, which are described in a very easy to roll out manner. Um, and in terms of uh, buying locally, you can see that uh, there's a, a behavior smart tactic that helps increase the appeal of local. Um, so that can be executed directly. In terms of reducing impact, again, there's a couple of solutions here that um, uh, you can take and apply. Uh, and in terms of uh, new season, new product development, um, uh, again, there's a couple of uh, solutions and tactics which are described in details and uh, uh, could um, automatically be used uh, in your context. So 
with this, um, I would like to conclude and just uh, uh, hopefully inspire you uh, by uh, refreshing your memory on how behavioral uh, techniques uh, can help achieve really powerful results in terms of footprint management, even if they are seemingly small and easy to execute. Um, and then uh, suggest that the cumulative effects of coordinated behavioral solutions, such as the ones that we are discussing here, can surpass uh, these of very expensive and time-intensive programs, which we have seen used um, in, in certain contexts, in, in similar contexts in the past. So, Thank you so much for your attention. Um, and I look forward to um, uh, supporting you as you, we are all looking to nudge our uh, industry and ourselves uh, towards uh, better, um, more successful sustainability. Thank you. Okay, uh, we we have um, uh, a couple of questions for you, Milena, because it was the example you used about the menus. Uh, uh, we have a question about, yeah, but in order to make people eat more vegetables in the Arctic, you have to transport the vegetables to 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 the Arctic. And is that a good thing? That Your example was more to the, if you want, for instance, local produced food to be on the menu, you could do some of the same kind of nudging by using the menu and by the way you, you present the menu. So so it was it was not only about eating more vegetables, it was about how you can how, how you can work with your menu. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's two things that um, could be done. Um, one is to to try to align local offerings with what would be the the traditional uh, mix of uh, food offerings that are traditionally available uh, based on what is locally available. And one of the trends that we are seeing uh, with the is in terms of food offerings is to uh, go towards the so-called you know 10 mile menus or uh, 50 mile menus, which actually um, are entirely built on what is available uh, in the vicinity of the specific destination. Now that's more easily done in places where you have more local produce and more variety locally um, than at destinations where this might not be um, easily available, especially at certain seasons. So to me, the right balance is to make adjustments towards local eating, even if not everything is available, because the reality is that, that travelers come and they are already prepared to have a different experience and, and maybe have different vegetables with different fruits, different foods that are available at home. Um, so even though it does sound, it doesn't, the, the, the automatic uh, kind of uh, reaction would be that we need to offer more to the consumers. Actually, that's not always necessary. Maybe part of the, 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 the non-negotiable sustainability action is to decrease the the the, the um, variety and just focus on on what is really less uh, negative uh, as footprint uh, on our own destination and fly less fresh produce from elsewhere and rely more on what are the traditional foods that um, communities and residents of these areas would um, rely on during the season. Of course, uh, when that's unavoidable, then of course we get into uh, uh, decision making about how to source food so that it's with minimal um, carbon footprint. So that's that's to me the the ideal mix that we seek to minimize maybe variety, but do it in a way that that is attractive to the traveler um, and. Uh, at the same time, uh, make decisions, other decisions about the products that we import and do them in a way that um, is less intense, let's say. Mm. <clears throat> to, 
Uh, because the, why why do you want Milena to talk about this in, 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 in this webinar? It's something about on the on one hand there will be new regulations, there will be new laws, there will be use of taxes in order to 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 bring forward sustainability both in tourism and in other sectors. On the other hand, what Milena shows is that some things can be done. You say you, you, you gain more with less in order also to understand how people think and 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 uh, understand how you can nudge them also uh, with no costs while so so this is about uh, uh, approaching this uh, this challenge with with um, the green shift and sustainability from two angles one to understand how people think and help them to do better decisions or more sustainable decisions the other thing is to 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 have the politicians make the right kind of regulations and laws and and, and tax systems that's something different so it, that's that's our point uh, point today. You can work on this from from two approaches or two angles. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I want to address. There's a couple of questions also in the chat, um, and the fir the the first one we kind of explained um, with the limited uh, import of vegetables. And again, um, obviously, the specific decisions about how to address that need to be made in the specific. Um, context where we can we need to balance having sufficient a sufficient product but then also not going beyond the the necessary i also wanted to to remind you that when we were during the um uh, the follow-up uh, workshop last year we talked about trends which are unlocked by covid 19 um, which had a profound impact on human behavior. And one of the things that happened was that we saw an uh, almost unexpected rise of, of human care, care for the, the neighbor, care for the socially weaker um, resident of our neighborhood and so on and so forth. And I really uh, see this care, uh, which is unlocked as an opportunity to address sustainability in our industry because it gives us an excuse to say to travelers um, when they ask, okay, do you have, I don't know, imported wine or do you have um, fresh produce to say, actually our philosophy is now to really help each other within the community and only source locally. So no, we don't have French wine for you. We only have, um, wine that's uh, uh, regionally sourced or uh, so on. And, and, and if you frame that as, as uh, a behavior of care, because all of us are now used and familiar with that feeling, people will relate to that in a very human way and they will understand it. And they will go along because this is, as as it was uh, indicated earlier by both by Bort and 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 Rauno, this is this is where all of us as residents, as consumers, have ended up. We care, and we expect that others will care. So, to me, we have a golden opportunity to ride on that care wave and actually explain that. Um, this is our decision. It's part of how we approach business. We are not negotiating um, uh, 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 sustainability and care for the close ones is non-negotiable for us. So to me, that's uh, uh, that's something that's important here. I also wanted to to respond to Ronald's uh, question on whether there are good examples and benchmarks on how to communicate uh, these topics to travelers. Yes, absolutely. Um, this is actually we tested uh, these uh, this technique um, in the in the Vastman Land um, uh, project, uh, and that's described in the manual. We tested the technique of moving away from telling people that oh, you know, buying locally is the right thing to do, towards um, these local products are high quality and 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 we highlight the the strong advantages that they have over imported alternatives so we don't ask the consumer to actually buy local as a charity as a sign of charity we ask them to buy 
the local product because it really has a lot of benefits. So we highlight the fact that it's local and we maybe place a, an image of the farmer that actually has produced the cheese or, or the, the, the piece of meat or, or something. Um, we give more information about why, how the, the farm operates and why this is actually as close as organic or natural as it can come and so on. So by highlighting the gains, the, the strengths of the local product, we are much likelier to produce uh, impact um, uh, in the behavior rather than uh, uh, if we seek to um, uh, to engage people in um, in a decision that they feel is uh, second second class, let's say. So but, I think uh, that. Um, but also, yeah. Milena, attached to that, uh, and, and what uh, <clears throat> Ron ask, asks about, it's also something about the use of default. What is the default option? Exactly. And 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 that's something about how you organize your information. With the de if the default option, when you have choices, is the most sustainable choice, that some people are likely to to choose that. Uh, because we know from the decision making that you just told about this lazy part of the brain or the quick uh, the quick uh, decision uh, maker uh, will tend to use the default option more exactly. Uh, mm. exactly exactly and and some of the techniques that i uh, reminded um, about today that relate to managing impact that's what they're based on uh, changing the default Hmm. Okay. Uh, um, you have to run to another meeting, Milena. If we don't have um, more uh, questions to you, I'll I'll uh, take over from now and, and keep my presentation that was supposed Thank to be. You. The, but Thank it relates so very good uh, to to your presentation. Thank you so much. And I can I can uh, attach some examples also from from your presentation to what I will talk about and and Ingrid later on as well. Mm. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Richard, can you? Okay, we're back uh, on Build Back Better. Um, so um, uh, the introduction stopped here because this is something that happens uh, also now. One thing is the, the, uh, how we as an industry uh, works with um, works with sustainability and some says I, I had I put the, the question why now because sometimes people say yes we can deal with sustainability but first we need to have the tourists back first we need to have the business back first we need to have uh, money for that but uh, the the trend now the overall trend is to look different at it the timeout that we have now is also creating uh, a, a bigger wave for changing a lot of things in a more sustainable way. So that's why they call it the build back better perspective. And, and, uh, and uh, like in the, this, uh, this uh, slide is from um, directly from Euromonitor's new big uh, analysis of, of top 10 global consumer trends. It aligns very much with UNVTO that Rana showed. But it says that also there is um, uh, consumers expect businesses now to be to use this uh, kind of timeout that uh, that uh, COVID nineteen uh, creates to look at how can we build back better, how can we do things smarter, what can we learn from the situation, so. That's why it's called a second chance to create a better future. Uh, um, if you look at uh, some of uh, the expectations from from um, uh, from these um, consumers related, uh, this is also from the survey, and and there's a lot of professionals within a lot of businesses asked about what they expect from the consumers, and sixty nine percent of the professionals interviewed in this analysis, they expect consumers to be more concerned about sustainability than they were before COVID-19. 
and it's about reduce plastic use. They are worried about the climate change, reduce food waste, recycling items, trust in uh, recycle labels, buy sustainable packaging, reduce energy use, repair broken items, reduce carbon emissions from what they do. So you see this, this situation and the expectation, it continues to be part of, of of the situation so it's it, so covid nineteen doesn't create a timeout for working with sustainability it's it creates a, a moment for increasing the work and i think that's important to 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 take on as well and then we had this survey uh, uh, that we did uh, a year ago uh, by the end of 19 um, uh, by 2019 and we uh, want today to discuss more what you can do in a situation where we you don't have uh, a lot of money but maybe you have time maybe you have uh, you can you can work with some of these aspects of sustainability that's that comes from uh, that you can do something with locally like Milena also talked about and we have chosen now to to give some input on these three ones the one you said that you wanted to work with was buy as much as possible locally and um, and we talked about this last year you you can see from uh, from the from the word cloud here that something that was mentioned in the survey from a lot of you is to work with the, with food, with local local food, local specialities, local um, uh, ingredients, local dishes. That's one part uh, of, of it. It's also like uh, the quote I have on the left side of the screen is from Ola, who is uh, running Svinøya Rorbur in, in Lofoten. He says, we don't buy anything outside Lofoten if we don't have to. I don't buy a nail outside Lofoten if I don't have to. So it's also about the mindset. It's also about looking around in the society, in the surroundings where you have your business or where you operate and to see and, and, and check whether do we buy everything locally? Do, do, are there suppliers? Are there business partners? Are there, are there uh, service providers that we can make use of? You so who are local locals so and and Ula says also it's something about the mindset they always look for local suppliers of everything they do and he also says that it creates a position for them as a business in the local society because every, he tells this to everybody he people also in other businesses they know that Ula he will buy everything local and it's something about uh, it. It also creates a, creates a position for him, gives him a standing locally. So I think that's something that um, you should think about and and reflect on. Do we buy everything we can locally? And have you tried alternatives? Milena said you have to check. Maybe sometimes it's more expensive. May, I know that some of you who are in chains are not allowed to buy everything locally, but I also know chain businesses in Norway, they are challenging this now. They say that, yes, we know my chain has, a, has a, uh, an agreement with some suppliers that we get food cheaper if we buy everything from those, uh, those suppliers. But he's, they also say, yeah, but, but we don't want to because we know it's transported a long way the goods, yes, it's cheaper for us, but we want to show our clients that we buy more locally. We want to show that on the table. We want to uh, we want to tell the story about how we buy things uh, locally. So that's that's one of the things you should do is to look around, see what whether you can do this, whether you can find new ways of collaborating with. With others on on this um, on this uh, aspect, um, the other thing you talked about was how can you that you wanted to reduce impact on nature and on environment from what you are doing. 
Um, and this also was about trails, about where you tell people to go, where you, the use of local uh, guides, it's about leave no trace, but it's also about how you plan or organize and present, for instance, your, your uh, the trips you have, activities that you promote. Uh, this quote on the left side is from uh, Trygve Sten in Excess Lofoten. He says, we plan our outdoor trips in a way that our guests always are close to existing facilities. This, this, he said this in a situation where they said that there are too many tourists in Lofoten. There are, they leave their litter, their garbage everywhere. They even uh, yeah, they pee behind the churchyard, uh, things like that. It got a lot of attention in the papers. And he said that, but we take care of our guests. We are now having a bigger part of our activities close to to the city of, of Svolvær. We have kayaking in the harbor. We have snowshoeing trips just outside the city center because then he knows that there will be changing rooms, there will be toilets, there will be facilities very close to where they operate. He knows that he can handle the situations and they expose these trips as something different. It's and it's something special to 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 go kayaking in between um, fishing boats and, and in the harbor area. It's a different experience, but also something that you can promote because then you don't have to transport the kayaks to somewhere else. It's less fuel, things like that. So it's how like the nudging in this will be that you highlight these trips, these activities that are close to your uh, to your business or, or, or don't have to make use of, of, of transport or you bring people into areas where there are no facilities and you have to take care of that as well. So it's something about what can you do uh, in order to, to cope with the situation and take care of the guests that you have and, and don't tell them to go places where there are no such infrastructure give them other opportunities. Maybe some of these opportunities that you can highlight in your menu of activities are closer, are easier, are closer to fa facilities. That's something you also can do in this. Uh, uh, but think about it. See how, how, you, can, how, how you can be uh, smart about this. And also, uh, you can reduce the use of plastic. You can buy wrapping. Food, if it's food related to activities, uh, can we wrap it differently? Can we uh, think about all the aspects of, of, of this uh, and, and start, start a discussion within your business about how do we do this in a smart way? Are there other ways of doing it? Think about it. The next thing is also you said that it's important for you to be able to strengthen uh, local culture, identity, and traditions. Uh, we talked, Milena talked about this as well, and we talked about this as a trend coming now that future tourists will be more interested in getting closer to the local history, to the local uh, society, to the locals themselves. And it's also about the mindset, how you tell the stories, how you present your own, own local community and also how you think about the tourists themselves. Uh, the quote I give you this time is, is from Moa. Uh, she, she, she is uh, the, 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 the developer in the, in the local municipality of the island Trana. And, she, uh, and they have their concept called Think Trana. And she said, we don't have tourists here. They're all, they are short-term inhabitants. And it's something about the nudging effect of that as well. If you think about what Pilena talks about, if you don't consider them tourists, if you consider them to be short-term inhabitants, you may treat them differently. You may, may invite them into to things you, you are more interested in talking to them. You, 
you create another atmosphere around how you deal with the tourists that you have in your area. This is, of course, easier if you are at a small place, like a small island like Trana, than if you are in a busy city. But anyway, it's something also about the, the, the mindset. It's about how you understand what they are uh, looking for. Because today, many tourists, they don't want to be considered tourists they want to be seen as travelers and as a traveler you want to be invited to uh, to um, things that the locals do or, or 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 see local habits and in the future one perspective is that it doesn't necessarily have to be something big something unique it's also to be invited into people's daily life in a way that you can tell, you can show, and you can uh, and you can um, relate. Uh, that is something also. Um, uh, and think about uh, think about it in the way you present your own business, your own destination. Is it something about the surroundings? Are there stories there? Uh, can we see some cities now they have um morning jogging with the locals they some businesses they they talk with are there are maybe there are some uh, uh, groups that usually are doing some jogging trips or or doing yoga outdoors in in the local community and they have created concept for instance in italy i know it, it it's in new york other places they go jogging with the locals as an as an opportunity to get to know some locals that have the some same uh, habits to put it that way as you have uh, they want to go for a, a morning walk or a morning jog and then you can also get them in in contact with each other they will tell stories there is an arena for asking about how they live what they do in the local society think about it it's a lot of things that you can um, you can do. Okay, um, uh, so uh, what you can do nudging uh, shown on this picture is something that Milena talked about. It's also start talking. Uh, we said last time talk and and walk the talk. That means that you should you should sit down in your business or at your destination now and talk about this what can we do on these local aspects the three examples i have given you what can we do how can we and and make use of some of the things that milena says okay maybe we could uh, uh, put up some goals for improvements what we can do what we want to achieve by this some measures that we can say okay uh, now i'm we are buying 20 percent of what we need in this business locally maybe next year next summer we'll buy 40 percent 50 percent is that a goal can we create some common goals within our business start talking about it and meet every week every month discuss yeah the last week we made this new trip close to where we live it's a new a new way of uh, putting up an activity things like that could also be done locally so you should you should decide something start and it's also about creating a mindset start with something that's possible but also uh, uh, make it the 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 talk uh, uh, make it the the issues that you discuss also within your business and it's something about being bold as well uh, challenge your business partners your network, your guests, to to if you have some ambitions about being a more sustainable uh, business or sustainable destination, you 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 must tell, you must dare to tell. They say we are doing our things. What are you doing? Would you collaborate with us on this? Um, okay, so a lot of things to discuss, but I will stop there in order to to. Uh, have some questions and and uh, before Ingrid is uh, taking over the stage and and giving and she will give you even more examples also about uh, how to get certified and and some experiences uh, and and examples from from Norway but um, 
do you have any questions about uh, what I have talked about? So please, uh, you're welcome to, to give them now. Uh, is there something in the feed, uh, Ingrid? No, there is no, uh, no questions. Yes, <laughs> someone is typing, <laughs> so we have to give them some time. There is a lot of uh, 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 inspiration and uh, examples and impulses. So we need someone is typing, but it's not coming up yet. But uh, if it, I don't know if it was uh, too much in a, in in a, in a few minutes or whether it's uh, where it's uh, whether it's opening uh, doors that you you know from before. Yes. Uh, but uh, Donald, Donald says thank you, board. Very practical, easy things. Questions to you all: How you see these measures? We challenged in the, in the in the survey uh, also everybody to 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 put up some measures for themselves. I think that, uh, like Milena says, it's it's something about putting up some measures that relates to to your situation, to your situ your business, and the things that you feel that you could do something about uh, in in your own operations. So you need to make that part of, of, of the, the talk and then walk the talk. Talk about what kind of measures, measures are relevant for us, what kind of achievements are we looking for, and then define the measures and say, and, and, and give it a timeline. Within two months, we'll achieve this. In within six months, we should achieve this. I think that is also part of the exercise that you need to do to do within your own business. Mm. And we had these discussions on the, the, the two other webinars, but of course there's been a, um, a different year uh, this year than it was when we started out. So of course, um, yeah, that's different. I just love talk and walk the talk. Richard says so, yeah, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Okay, then I think we'll switch to, to Ingrid and then we'll have a little wrap up in the end as well. Thank you. Um, yeah, I will uh, start where uh, Bord um, um, left us in his presentation. And uh, let's see, I'm just going to figure out how to... Uh, uh, Richard, can you have my presentation now? Can I do it with the, with my, let's see, um, no, um, I can't, let's see, yes, there it was, the technical. So uh, I would also like to pick up the threads from uh, uh, the two webinars that I um, attended together with you, actually, the first was 4th of February and the second was 28th of April. And now we have 27th of January and it's been a very strange uh, year. Um, when we started out in February, um, we didn't see this coming. In April, we didn't see how long it was going to last. And now we are starting to see the end of it, we all hope. Um, I will also uh, inspire you for new targets in uh, my uh, presentations, because what we now um, see, uh, I, will, I will talk on, on the same uh, um, aspects as, as Bohr did, uh, starting with the, the uh, question, is it about time to get certified uh, uh, for you and your businesses? I know um some of you talked about it we discussed it uh, last winter and i'm very curious to to find out how you are all doing with this work um but first um um uh, as you also commented on uh, rano how can you measure uh, your uh, uh work on the sustainability issues because um it's not now a question uh, uh, regarding why are we doing this. It's more about the tools and the measures on how we can do it operational, 
how we can measure it and then how we can also communicate it to our uh, partners, our customers, our um, employers and the rest of the society. So it's from why to how. And um, I would also like to put in that, um, you know, the all the SDGs, the 17 um, targets, uh, it's been with us some time, but I don't know about Sweden and Finland, but in Norway, we got our first minister for sustainability in January last year. So he's not been work yeah, he's been working uh, a year and a couple of weeks. Uh, so it's been like working with sustainability in different sectors. Uh, we have not uh, SAS Riksrevision, that's the office of the Auditor General of Norway, have seen into uh, Norway's uh, uh, work on sustainability all over. And uh, they have found that we have to do better in coordinating cross-sectoral. So that's why we now have a minister who's going to work across the different sectors. And I believe that in tourism, we have been working uh, uh, in, in Norway and in, in, in the Nordic countries uh, very upfront on these things. Um, we have talked about in the earlier uh, webinars about the uh, sustainable destination label that we have had in Norway since uh, the beginning of um, uh, for, for 15 years now. And uh, that has been a really systemic and long term approach on the destination level. And we have talked a lot about on the business, on the company level either with nudging or with uh, working on different issues, as uh, board mentioned, uh, making some uh, um, small targets uh, and, and going further. But also now, uh, I think that also on the country level, on the Norway country level, there is a really uh, more... Um, uh, the time is ready to also do it on on uh, on a more country level. I don't know about Sweden and and, and Finland, but in Norway, it's really now uh, the time. So also the country can uh, do some uh, choices and and really uh, go towards a more sustainable future. Uh, we see that now. So I will start on. Uh, the destination level on the certification or the labeling work. Uh, this work has really been boosting this last year or since you started in this uh, Visit Arctic Europe uh, uh, project uh, two years ago. It's really been boosting. So I know that there are some of the uh, attending the webinar that are uh, already labeled or in uh, in uh, in their uh, um, like Vesterolm I know is working towards uh, the label in a month or two and Senya is uh, on we have Buda working uh, so there are a lot of the destinations in Norway working towards this uh, uh, sustainable label uh, or more over 100 municipalities, 45 destination companies working on this now. So it's growing, it's a big, big family. And on the, mm, uh, the business level, uh, also this very special year we have behind us, uh, there, uh, there um, have been some uh, positive effects uh, on the um, certification uh, work uh, on business level. Uh, for example, the Eco Lighthouse, they have made uh, the um, certification process more easy and also using dig digital uh, tools. Uh, that's the one part of it. And we uh, are, are um, here in Norway, uh, there are a lot of uh, fundings now, uh, both for compensation due to lost business, uh, uh, but we also have re restructuring uh, 
funding uh, for tourism, uh, the tourism sector now from Innovation Norway. And in these fundings, they have uh, decided that uh, the green shift uh, is a, uh, a right way to go, of course, and it's uh, considered uh, important reconstructing for uh, tourism businesses. So uh, businesses can uh, get funding for using time and money on the certification process. I don't know about Sweden and, and, and Finland, but if you don't have it, uh, ask and work to get it, because this is going to work, is my guess, for the business uh, side of it as well. Um, before we ask uh, Richard to help uh, with a small survey, I, I'm very curious to hear uh, about how you are all working with uh, certification, the eco-certification. We have different uh, pro uh, programs and systems in the countries, but that doesn't matter. Please, uh, Richard, can you put on the small survey? And please, if you can just say, yes, we have a certification. No, we don't have one yet. Or we are working on it right now. I'm eager to see. Let's see. Please use the survey. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, I know that we have around uh, 30 participators, so please ask. This is also for the uh, destination companies, uh, for the uh, 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 organizations, not only the, the, the tourism businesses, please answer uh, if you have been working on or you already have um, um, eco-certification. Okay, 15 have asked, you have answered. Can we have some more, please? See? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so uh, I don't know anyone having pro uh, trouble with uh, with the uh, answering, or should we um, stop it now, Richard? I don't know. We have. Um, Six out of 38, yes. 10 out of 38, no. And six out of 38 saying we are working on it. Okay, you can take me back then, Richard, to the presentation. Yeah. Okay, so um, uh, some of you have the uh, these. Uh, certifications and uh, a lot of you are working on it and some of you haven't started on it yet and I would really uh, um, encourage you to do so uh, because it's uh, they are really good tools to work on the systematic um, uh, path on the sustainability road I know that we have this uh, survey in uh, starting up in 2019 Team. Uh, so I think it will be interesting to see when the Visit Europe program is over to have the same uh, mapping then and see how this uh, development has uh, been going, if it's been going the right way. Um, board said something about be bold and challenge your surroundings. And I will give you an example from the, um, the, the ski lift um, company, companies in Sweden. Uh, they work with uh, their own uh, target to be fossil free in uh, in uh, seven years and the CO2 footprint is uh, some some kind of a pink elephant uh, in the in the room as we say in Norway on the discussion on sustainability in tourism but 
now that the, the perspective uh, that's been in the discussions is more like what you can do in your own core business and then you can discuss with your suppliers and your partners on the one hand and then it's the transportation to and from the destinations on the other hand and of course it's some of these things that you as a small or bigger business can't really do so much about but i really uh, think it's uh, important to first uh, do your own homework uh, with your own uh, uh, issues that you can overcome and then talk about it and, and challenge your surroundings to do the same. And in, in uh, Norway now, uh, as I said, uh, there's been a lot of work on the national level. We have the new uh, emission calculator launched uh, in November, uh, just before Christmas, from Visit Norway and Innovation Norway, where uh, you as a business or destination or region can go in and, and uh, in a way, put in your um, guests, where they come from, uh, if they are on uh, on uh, tourism or um, travel or as a business traveler and uh, where your destination is located in Norway and the calculator will give you the amount of uh, CO2 uh, related to your business and then you can uh, simulate and uh, change uh, the type of guests how long they are staying, where did they come from, when do they come, to see what that gives you uh, as a result on a better uh, or, or um, um, reducing the, the uh, emission. So that's a really good uh, uh, tool now and uh, you have the link in the presentation so you will get that afterwards if you don't, have, if you don't already know um, about it. Um, and last uh, webinar, we were also talking about um, a case from Voss in the western part of Norway, where um, a partnership with businesses and the public sector and the big transportation uh, sectors like uh, V or uh, in uh, the, the railways in, in Norway, um, they have partnered on a uh, um, quite um, clever um, 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 solution with a bike in the center and the surrounding of the destination. And they launched it uh, in uh, this uh, summer. Uh, and that's something where digitalization and sustainable work together. And that's a success. It's easy. For the, uh, for the visitor to find a bike and to use the bike from the railway station to, to get around in the uh, destination. And it's uh, um, also a way for the businesses to, to uh, approach their customers to say, you can travel to our uh, lodge or uh, hotel or camping without using your car. You can take the train and then you will find a bike and then you can easily take it and come up to our uh, attraction or our um, uh, accommodation. So uh, that's also a good example where the small businesses can get a lot out of a bigger partnership uh, at the destination and also funding from, the, from other um, um, more uh, governmental uh, funds. And um, my last example, I uh, will send you um, the, the link uh, also here. It's from Rukan uh, in the mountain Norway, where they've been working uh, with the label um, for um, sustainable destinations. Very good for a couple of years, but they felt that it, it wasn't, that they didn't get so much attention about it. They are really good at marketing their uh, um, to, uh, tourism attractions and their uh, products. Uh, so they thought, 
well, we really need to communicate about how we are working on uh, sustainability as well. So they use those, the same um, 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 techniques and the same partners to make a, um, kind of a, com a commercial on their sustainable, sustainability work. And they got the voices from the mayor, from some companies, uh, from uh, uh, some um, uh, high shots in the Norwegian society that uh, have cabins and are very fond of Rukan uh, or from Rukan. And they made this movie and it's a really good sample of uh, talk and walk the talk and tell the surroundings that you're working on sustainability. So, um, board, I uh, um, suggest that you we go back to you. I see on the, the time here that we are uh, um, uh, running out. So I will um, take if you take uh, board back into the studio, Richard. And if someone uh, have some questions for my presentations, and then we can sum up. Uh, in some of the minutes that are left, board. Okay. Do you have any questions for Ingrid? So you need to, to, to type them now because it's the only way we can communicate with you. Um, I, we know it's uh, it's a lot of things concentrated in a short period of time. Yes. <laughs> That's the meaning of this uh, uh, webinar as well to give you some. Uh, some uh, ideas on how you can uh, work with this uh, more on a daily basis so um, uh, but uh, uh, because if there are no questions i will uh, i will show you the my last uh, slide and then uh, and talk a little bit about uh, uh, how you can view the future mm -hmm. um, because i think that uh, the, we started with this build back better perspective. Uh, there is a big, uh, and, and Rana said something about it uh, in the beginning of this webinar. Uh, there is a big TripAdvisor survey where they track what people are looking at uh, in this period of time where, 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 yeah, very few can travel. But anyway, people are looking for their searching for 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 uh, trips they want to do uh, when it's possible to travel again and um, and uh, from that survey they have found that 62 percent says that they will they would prefer to travel to somewhere where they can support local business and that's why we have tried to talk today about the things that you can do in order to make future tourists aware of how they will be able to support local businesses in the future if they cho choose to visit your destination, your region, your business. So it's something about being aware of this. So if, if you don't tell about this, they will never know. And we are talking about people planning future trips. So this you should be aware of this. It's, it's time for for, for discussing these issues now and, and, and also put them into your communication. Um, also, what Rana says that some of the European tour operators I've heard also say that they believe that fu their future customers want to stay longer in each destination and visit fewer places on each trip and travel less on big round trips. That means that they will dive deeper into your destinations they will expect more. What is there to see? What is there to do? Are there local specialities to, to, to try out? So it also gives you an opportunity to, to work with these uh, issues because this sustainability work also meets a demand that will be there in the future. And destinations with space and outdoor activities will be winners. Like Rana also said, UNDTO says this. This also comes from an, some international analysis that people will, uh, at least in the in the in the in the first phase of the the recovery phase after COVID nineteen, people will 
probably the tendency that when they are they are asked, they say that we will avoid places like Venice and the Rambla in Barcelona because they know that the image of these places are crowds of people. So for the whole of for northern Sweden, northern Norway, from Finnish Lapland, it's possible now to create picture of this region at the, some uh, a region that can deliver on these uh, aspects of the new situation you can bring people into to close to the local societies close to nature close to local culture you can you can uh, um, uh, give people space you can give them outdoor activities you can you can develop and make use of more of what you have in your surroundings in order, in order to make your destinations interesting for one week instead of two days. I just want you to think about this. This also creates some possibilities to build back better and be more and, and make more sustainable development also to something that you can use in the future marketing and way of positioning this region in in uh, when when things are opening up again that's what i um, wanted to say to you uh, at the end of this uh, webinar mm -hmm. so it's a possibility uh, for you now to have some final questions otherwise we respect your time and 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 uh, we are four minutes uh, after the schedule now so uh, do you have some final question? Or reflections. Or reflections. Or comments, or critics, or whatever. Mm -hmm. We'll send you links to what we have presented. Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, okay Someone's typing now, so we'll see. Um, Several professional travel business say those who deliver quality at all levels will win in post-corona time. Any responsibility is quality, and responsibility is quality. Yeah. 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 yeah absolutely. Responsibility uh. is quality. Um, Ronald. Uh, yeah. Okay, you can, uh, Richard, can you let uh, Ramu say something? Thank you, Riku. <laughs> Thank you for the Ingrid and, and Milena for a very uh, interesting and good catch up to the issue. As we have learned here now, uh, the sustainability is even more important now in a, a post COVID uh, situation final consumers respect uh, topic and uh, of course we as uh, local suppliers and service providers we have to notice that and and uh, even though it's heavy time financially but uh, today we also see the measures which can be done in a, a grass level uh, without big investments and uh, this is uh, really the topic we need to concentrate. Thank you, Port. Thank you, Ingrid. Thank you, Milena. Thank you for all you who, who participated. And uh, uh, now it's time. We are not anymore middle of the vortex of uh, Corona, but we are seeing the post COVID uh, is there and we need to make the measures and, and actions uh, towards that. I wish you all health and, and strength to, to and positive mind to go through this uh, final sprint of, of Corona. And, and uh, this year is the year that we kick Corona as so badly. <laughs> Excuse me. And I apologize my French here, but thank you for all. And Thank you. see you all uh, on uh, 16th of February in a digitalization webinar with Ashwin Rajan. Thank you.